So in a previous video, we looked at how to write some data of some type to a text file. In this video, we'll take a look at how to read the data and print it on the screen, right? So the first thing that you always have to do is to open the file that you want to work with, right? So I'm gonna actually use this same function, same structure, simply f open underscore s, and I'm gonna give it the address of in, then the file name is gonna still be point dot that, though you can change it if you want. You can have two different files, one for input and one for output. That's fine, but I'm gonna use the same file in my case. Uh, if you're using the same file, you should uh, actually be careful that you actually close the file using the output file handler before opening it, right? Because you cannot open the same file twice. Uh, so there's a file name and the third one is the mode. We're gonna again open it not for writing but for reading and we're just gonna say R here. Simple enough. Now we're simply gonna have to check if is in null then we're just gonna return one cool so that's simple next up we have to read from this file we don't have to prepare anything we we have this buffer in that we have uh, defined here so we can use it but that's basically all we need so how do you read a line of text from a file simple you're just gonna use the f get function. fgets function simply takes in a uh, buffer, so the buffer that we want to read to, which has to be a, uh, well, a char pointer in our case, so buffer in, that's where we want to write to from the file. The max count is again 256, that's the, that's the maximum amount of characters it can read, because fgets reads the whole line up until backslash n. Right, so up until the end of the line itself or the end of the file, right? So we don't know exactly how much it's gonna be, but this is gonna be as far as it goes. And then we have the file handle, right? So the file handle that we want to read from. Simple enough, we're just gonna type in in. This is our file handle that we have opened in the past. Now, the return value of f gets is a bit special. Basically, what it says inside the specification is that if it was able to read some file, we would get the pointer back. That's all. But if it weren't able to read that file for some odd reason, it wasn't able to read any sort of any character at all, then it's going to return null. So we can simply do here a check if this guy is null. Well, then what I want you to do is really close the file, so f close in and return one. Right? Never forget to close your files. Now, if this was successful, we would get past this if statement. So here we can say, okay, we have the, we have the text, we have the text itself here in buffer in, but that's just characters, right? We have the character one and zero, we don't have the number 10. So we have to convert that. How? Well, you might notice that there is a similar function that you have used in, and you might have not realized that actually converted these uh, strings to actual numbers. And that is scanf, right? We're just gonna use a, variance, a variant of that function so that it doesn't uh, take the input from the keyboard so you don't have to type it in, it's gonna take the input from a string, similar to how sprintf worked. So you can say here s scanf underscore s in my case. And first we're, we're gonna take the buffer. So this guy is buffer in, right? Makes sense, that's where we're taking the information from. So it's there. This is the guy that we uh, read to from the file. Now, second parameter is, well, the format. What's the format that we're expecting this string to have? Well, we know. We already have it 
up here exactly this is the format that we wrote it in so that's the way we want to read it it's the same exact one so we can just copy and paste this format string in, in fact you should be maybe uh, storing this somewhere else and actually using it as a variable because once you want to change this you might want you might uh, have troubles if you don't change it in both places right so uh, best case scenario is to just have this stored inside a variable. Anyway, uh, this is the format, right? We know that this is gonna be the format we read that information in. And then we need the places to store this variable, like these two percent %d's, similar to scanf, right? So you just kind of do what? Uh, I'm gonna use the p1 here. I'm gonna actually define another point. So I'll say p2 and I'm gonna say p2.x, but not just p2.x, we want at the p2.x location, we want to save this percent %d that we get from the file. And then at p2.y, all right? So now all we have to do is really print it out on the screen. So we can say here printf, as before, we can say uh, read from file, the point, let's say percent %d, Percent D. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually remove the comma just so that you can see that it doesn't have to do anything with this same format. It doesn't have to be the same, right? Because now it's actual data. It's actually inside this P2 point that we have defined up top. So if I say here P2.x and P2.y, and also not forget to close our, our input file, you can actually move it up here because we've already finished uh, working with this once this fgets call is finished. So close the file, read or uh, read from that buffer into the variables themselves and then print out the variables. So now if I try to run this, you'll notice read from file the point 12 and minus nine. So that worked nicely. What if we remove the write part of our program, right? Because we have two parts. We have the read and the write. So uh, <clears throat> here is read. Let's denote that here. And up here is write. And what I can do is simply comment out this whole thing because we don't need it anymore. And if I try to run this, I still get the same point. 12 and negative nine. And if I, and I can even change this data. So I can go here and say negative 11, why not? And if I run this, I'm gonna get negative 11 here, which is very nice. So that's, that's basically all there is to it, to reading and writing text files in C, right? In a way, what we have done is we have mapped this guy, this P1 or this P1's values to a line in a text file. That process is called serialization. And mapping that line, that line of text to a variable that's called deserialization. So in effect, what we did is serialize and deserialize this uh, P1 point here using C functions. So this is, I think, really nice. And I think not that complicated. So to recap, let's see how we read this uh, line of text. First, we opened the file like we did with uh, writing, with the writing uh, operation. Then we used fgets to read up until a new line character or the end of file, right? So this is gonna read as far right as possible and only save 256 bytes of it. So we know that two integers can be more than 256 characters, so that's fine. It's a pretty good limit, pretty good upper limit. So we're not gonna have to deal with any issues there, right? So that's, that's nice. It's gonna read from this file or file handler, really. And we're also gonna check, is this guy, has this guy returned null? Well, if it did, then we got a problem, right? Denoted by this one. If it did not, we're gonna just close the file and use a variance of scan f to deformat that string. So we have the format, 
we have the string itself, we want to uh, move that data from that string to variables, to individual variables. This is the way to do it using s scanf. I used underscore s, but really you can use just the normal one. It's going to do the same thing. And then I'm just printing it on the screen. That's all I'm doing. So I hope you now understand how to read and write files in C. It's not complicated at all. It's just that besides the normal uh, functions that you might call in any language, any other language, you have to check, is this guy actually opened? Is this guy, has this guy actually been read? And so on and so forth, right? So, uh, and make sure you do those checks. Otherwise your program might fail and you won't uh, know why, right? Thank you so much for watching. In next videos, we're going to take a look at how to uh, read and write to binary files. So be on the lookout for that. And if you do have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Take care. Bye.